MMA power debuters instead of UFC debuters, right? We call them MMA power debuters. Yeah, and they're getting ready to feel the power. That's right. It's First gonna, time. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure to go on over to our social media. It's just always going across the top of the screen here. It's at MMA Power Hour, and we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or trying to get out in a few other places. Uh, you guys are all absolutely amazing. Uh, for those of you on Fight TV, make sure to jump on over to uh, – uh, the Hannibal TV, you can Google them or MMA Power Hour, and you can uh, catch us in all those different fun places. And uh, uh, with that being said, actually, if you're on any of, the, of these other platforms, which it looks like there's only one or uh, two, they're popping in. Uh, so y you can head on over to Fight TV. It's F I T E dot TV, and we are primarily over there go ahead and subscribe to mma power hour and keep up with us on social media and our website for sure absolutely are you ready are you ready fight also want to say hello to my good friend marcus 23 and then we also have t dog and doctor is that it so good to see all three of you here it seems like the screen is a little bit contorted so sorry if i butchered your uh your name there but uh glad to have you guys in here really appreciate you all t dog T Dog, that's right. T Dog, Doctor, and Marcus23. Thank you guys so much. And we have a lot of other people lurking that don't jump in and say anything. And so we see the vast masses out there watching through the different sources. And there are a really good amount as time go has gone by. Sometimes several thousand people are here in the beginning, and sometimes people join throughout the show. But however many, however few, we appreciate you all equally. Absolutely. So, Colin got some great fights coming up here yes and two, two of our guests on tonight actually are going to be uh fighting this saturday fighting up in the saturday. U at UFC 265 toyota center in houston main event being the black beast houston's own fighting in his backyard against the frenchman cyril gone the uh training yeah. partner or former training partner of francis and ganu gone is a beast and the black beast is of course a beast uh, very interesting matchup. Um, I don't think there's probably gonna be too much trash talk because 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 Derek is the expert in kind of funny talk. He's not usually really trying to create bad blood or intimidate anyone, and just a fun, unique guy. And then Gon is a very very classy, friendly guy, upbeat, very gracious guy. It seems like so. I don't think there's gonna be anyone pushing each other really hard. Well, of course you can't anymore in the ufc as it's a huge fine now i think your fight's canceled and uh you receive a fine as well so but nevertheless i think that there's going to be respect between both of those men and it's going to be an amazing fight between two very very big guys and then the co-main uh and the co-co-main both amazing jose aldo against his countrymen two brazilians pedro munoz and jose aldo jr i'm i'm probably most excited for that the one and, uh, and then the co-co-main yep. right yep and the Coco Main, and then you know what? The fourth, our guest in the fourth card, Coco Main, Michael Chiesa against past guest of ours, Vicente, Vicente Luque. This is going to be an amazing fight. And one of our guests today, Tisha Torres, going against Angela Hill. Very important fight between two top 10 fighters. I think Tisha for sure is top 10, and Angela, if not, is really close. I think they both are. They're both top 10, I'm pretty sure. So that's going to be exciting. Also, fighting Casey Kennedy. Uh, Casey Kenny, rather, against Song Yudong. Very good fight. Bobby Green, Rafael Fiziev, uh, Vince Morales, Dracor Rodriguez, Ed Herman's on the card, Alonzo Menafield, Jessica Panay, Carolina Kowalkiewicz, uh, Ode Osborne, and Manuel Cape. And then our other guest tonight, Miles Johns, against Anderson Dos Santos. Debut, long awaited debut of Melissa Gatto, also on the card. And then Johnny Munoz in action against Jamie Simmons. Some really, really good fights, and uh, definitely looking forward to them this saturday for sure hey, i wanted to give a quick shout out for any of you that have really ill relatives or terminally ill relatives or friends and if you're a caregiver or anything a uh, big respect to you it's very hard i have some um very ill relatives now and uh and it, it's uh, a lot uh, of work and god bless them but you want to do everything you can to to make um to possibly help them win the fight against whatever terminal illness they have or and make the light their life as pleasant as possible and it's definitely hard on you as well so make sure to stop and, and take a break whenever you if you can give yourself some love because uh you know it takes a lot of energy and a big respect and love and respect uh for people that are caregivers or are giving care to uh relatives that are hurting 
So absolutely, yeah. So anyway, we are probably a minute and a half, two minutes away from our first guest, but uh, you know um, what? And she hasn't confirmed anything yet, so you may not. want to okay. go ahead and hit her up real quick. Okay, let me while see. While I figure out a couple other things. Oh, so right. Looks you like uh, do that. a little bit of a, a okay. glitch going on. There we go. We will be good. Okay, let's see if we can get. That over there. there that's go. not it. All right, and there we go. Nope, that's not it either. And <laughs> all right, that this should be trying to yes. figure it out. Thank you for hanging in there with us, yes, everybody. We appreciate you guys a lot. Okay, and all right. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna dictate this because it's just that much quicker. We're getting ready to Skype call you, but it looks like you haven't accepted our request as a, a user. Period. The call may go through without that, but if you could accept it, that would be great. We'll be calling you in about uh, a minute or so from. I'll type that in. And he'll type in the other part. Because yep. <laughs> it never translates, anyways. No. Great, okay. great name. It really sticks out. People are always like, what is that? Because I still use the email. Yep, yep, yep. But, absolutely. Yeah. You've had that for a good while. Yeah. Well, iFluxy was the. The company we were going to run with that's what started this all uh yep. four and a half almost five years ago yep. now yep oh exciting things absolutely and okay. we're just sitting here waiting to get that guest confirmed i mean we have them confirmed for tonight her confirmed yeah for tonight, all of our but we are, we're, we're just yeah. trying to get the skype make sure the skype is connected set. some of our guests actually have not uh have not used skype before or haven't used skype for several years and so you know, it can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge. We really appreciate, though, that uh, people are willing to do it for us. We definitely find uh, that. There she is. She's right there. So Beautiful. we're ready to go. Perfect. And I'll just call her. You don't need to send anything. Okay. You don't need to send anything. Okay. Uh, and we'll just go into that Skype dance. Do it. Hello, Tisha. Can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Let me make sure that's in there better. Perfect. Yep. And we have the video. And as long as you see yourself in the frame, you're good to go. And uh, since we're live, let me give you a proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, super excited to have this next guest on the show for the first time. As everyone knows, I'm a huge uh, women's MMA fan uh, for a couple of decades now. And uh, this next guest is one of the very few uh, top contenders that I have not had on the show in the UFC women's division. And so couldn't be more excited to welcome the absolutely awesome UFC strawweight contender, Tisha the Tiny Tornado Torres. Welcome to the show, Tisha. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. My pleasure. I believe I saw either your first fight or one of your earliest fights, uh, and I believe it was or they were in Invicta, or did you do some before you were fighting in Invicta? No, I made my pro debut with Invicta. I did four fights there, and then I went on to UFC. Yes, so then I did see your first fight live. I started watching Invicta from the very first event. And I was really excited about it. I had already been watching women's MMA for about 10 years. I've, I'm a long time uh, MMA fan, having trained on and off myself, never a professional fighter, but just really loved the idea of it. I actually had a copy of the press kit for UFC one right before the event. Yes, I was very young, um, but older than <laughs> older than you fighters. That's for sure. You know, uh, except maybe a couple, but yeah, so long time fan. And I did see your first fight. Very impressive. I knew you were out of, American top team and you looked in amazing shape and really focused and uh, definitely was a, a fan right away uh, from your performances and and Victor was a, was a good experience for you uh, what was it like uh, starting out your career already in a show that was high profile like that oh it was awesome I mean that was a place to be outside of being in the UFC well at that time that was the UFC for women's MMA right. you know yep. we weren't in the UFC yet I made my pro debut in 2012. Uh, I think I just came in uh, at the right time and I had the opportunity. Um, I think it was Invicta 3 where I uh, made my pro debut mm -hmm. and just went off from there. You know, I, I won four fights and then Dana decided to add the 115 weight class and he called me one day and I, honestly that call changed my life and I went in the Ultimate Fighter and I've been in the UFC ever since. Absolutely, and I, I love the Ultimate Fighter. I'm really excited that it's come back 
and you know even though it's it's somewhat old news i think it's definitely still relevant and and, and i always love to hear at least maybe a couple minutes of the fighter's experience and 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 how you felt about being uh in the ultimate fighter house and 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 you know the reality show any anything interesting you could share or just overall what your thought was how bad how good how lonely would you do it again would you never do it again you make some friends did you make some enemies um when i first initially got off the show i said i'd never do it again but now you know seven years later i would do it again it would definitely be under different circumstances i would you know stick up for myself me be more vocal um, but it was a great opportunity, you know, it allowed um, fight fans to see us outside of the octagon and, you know, it gives you the opportunity to resonate with the fighters and, you know, hear their backstory before you actually see them fight in the UFC, as opposed to, you know, the fighters who just come in, you know, si right away signed, you know, there's no backstory to them. You really don't get to uh, get any in-depth information unless you Google them or start following them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it really, you know, set the tone for us. And, you know, the 16 women on that show, we all got in the UFC and made the um, straw division. With our so yeah, on it was like really catty. <laughs> you know, in one little place and a lot for um, going into the show. So that, um, you know, set up some rivalries, I guess. But uh, I tried to stick to myself. You know, I was um, in the, the midst of a drama, uh, like, once or twice. But it wasn't on my end, just because other girls, you know, creating dumb stuff. But at the end of the day, it was an awesome opportunity. I'm grateful for it. Um, and I would do it again. Very cool. And, and definitely super entertaining. And once in a while, when I talk to people that are new MMA fans that are not familiar with The Ultimate Fighter, I kind of tell them how that works. And a lot of them, when they hear that the fighters are living with people that some of whom that they are going to fight, they go, wow, they're kind of like, you know, man, that's got to be kind of crazy. I mean, what what is it like? You've always been a really well-spoken person. I've seen your interviews and you always communicate really well. So I'd love to hear from you. Do you have to get yourself in a certain state of mind or can you really be there make friends but yet also possibly beat the crap out of your friend i mean what does that feel like and you know how, how is that kind of psychologically knowing that the person you're hanging with and maybe having a nice chat with is someone you're going to be throwing down with the next day um going into the show i really didn't know anybody i mean i fought uh rose and police and um going to the show so i i did have some wins over the girls um and I was initially on Team Melendez, but I, I lost my first fight. A girl got injured, and I ended up going to Team Pettis. So that was some of the drama there. And then I fought, I won, and then I fought again, and I lost. But really, the one friend I had to say, kind of bonded through you know, just being there and kind of being the outsider at different times. Um, I mean, there was most of the girls I hung out with truly were on uh, team Pettis while I was still on team Melendez. Mm -hmm. Um, there were just a lot of, you know, girls when you get together, they, they, you know, flock together here, flock together there. And I, I pretty much was neutral. I didn't really not like anybody, but, um, some of them seemed to not like me. Hmm. Uh, but I, I, you know, it was easy for me to go in there and, you know, I literally slept, um, you know, on, above my opponent that i was fighting mm. uh, at one point um so it was just another day in the office i, I knew going into it, we all wanted the same thing just now even now you know seven years later in the ufc i'm fans of a lot of the women in my division and outside of my division it really doesn't matter to me um that we might fight one day or we have fought um you know because they're great athletes and i admire that um do i want to be champion of course i want to be champion but at the end of the day only one of us can be there so there's no sense of like being shitty with somebody just because, you know, they're somewhere where you want to be. You know, you need to work your way there. And that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. I like that attitude. And I always like the fact that so many people in MMA have a, a, a respect that that martial arts kind of is you know is meant to be and, and represents and not everybody but i think a lot of people are are not out there trying to hurt their opponent badly or stop anyone from making a living i've always been a boxing fan but i think even more so in mma there's that respect thing and and i think it's it's majority of fighters do have it seems like some sort of 
you know, respect for the arts and for their opponent. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think a lot of us do. Um, to some extent, people do, but they still put on that, um, I don't want to say facade, but they put on that actor type of role, I guess, because it is an entertainment business. And people do like to see the rivalry and, you know, people talking shit back and forth. Some people maybe truly are that way, but there's other people that I do believe that just do it, you know, for, for the hell of it and to entertain people, which is fine. I, I get that. But uh, I don't see a need for me to do that. Um, I haven't really had any issues with any opponents, um, like any big issues with any opponents in the past. And I grew up doing martial arts, so I've always been taught, you know, the traditional way of things. And I've never gotten in a fight outside of the, you know, octagon or ring or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I think everybody's just to each their own. And I doesn't, I don't mind when people. Um, come off as cocky or put on a show because it is entertaining to me too. Um, but there's a, a point where some people cross lines. Um, then that's where it might bother me if it was like hitting me personally. Right, right. And speaking about fighting outside, I know that everyone always thinks that if the male fighters go to bars or clubs, there's good, there's possibility of guys pushing and shoving and, and, you know, fighters have had instances where people have tried to pick a fight or a bunch of guys just start ending up elbowing each other and stuff. And have you ever had an experience like that? I, I would imagine it doesn't happen as much with women, but I guess women are getting a little bit more aggressive nowadays with to survive and uh, do what they have to do. Have you ever had any situation where any women started pushing you or shoving you in a bar situation or anything like that? No, I've never come across that. But um, should I come across that, I definitely have to um, hold back myself because I can get in trouble. I could easily hurt somebody. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I definitely would have to control myself in that type of situation. Yep. And I'm not a person to, you know, uh, sit there and argue back and forth with somebody. I mean, if you get me heated enough, maybe. Right. But I don't think anything would ever you know, come out of it. That's cool. You've always had that good Zen type of attitude. It seems like that martial arts that you you really represent a martial artist and I haven't seen you acting crazy or getting, you know, disrespectful at any time. And, and, and that's a cool thing. I, I respect that and admire that. So let's talk uh, more, uh, more pressing and upcoming uh, excitement with the fact that you are fighting this Saturday once in a blue moon. Right when I tell my uh, guests that, they say, nope, the fight's just been canceled. So I'm praying and crossing my fingers that you're not about to say that for this Saturday, right? No, no, no. Let's not even talk about no. that. No, oh, sorry, you're happening. right. <laughs> that would exactly. be worse for you than for me to hear it. Yeah, I know. Look at it. So yeah, no, and, and I think your opponent doesn't have very many situations of pulling out, if any. But this is a rematch. You're going up against Angela Hill, UFC 265 in Texas. Super exciting. Um, this is a, a matchup where you are a slight favorite. Both of you are veterans. She was also in. Was she in in the, in the Ultimate Fighter with you? I think she was. Right or no? She was. Yes. And uh, so how well do you know Angela Hill? Obviously, you've known her for many years, but is she someone that you've had any sort of occasion to hang out with or say hello with, or you like her, you don't like her, she doesn't make an impression on you? What would you say? Um, on the show, she wasn't necessarily nice to me, but I won't say she was mean to me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, since then, no, we have never been friends. I've never talked to her. Um, we were supposed to fight in December. Um, she got COVID. It got canceled. I got a new opponent. And just since then, she was, you know, calling me out and such. And honestly, I wanted somebody higher ranked than me. So I was just waiting and waiting, and I didn't get that. So I just finally signed the contract to fight her. But in the meantime, she did do a little shit talking. But um, as soon as I signed the paperwork, she kind of, you know, fizzled out and didn't say anything there you go uh so yeah i'm just indifferent about her i don't necessarily like her and i don't not like her makes sense and i know you have both changed and improved since uh those early days and uh you know you've had a good couple of wins you faced everyone there is to to face i would think obviously level of competition on your end would be slightly better but then again she's fought so many people too that i'm sure you're not kind of trying to, to, to pull out an edge there as far as comparing. But 
I um I do think that uh, that uh, your last performance was a, a really impressive one. It's funny because I remember talking to a couple of guys that are expert handicappers, and they were like, "I just have a I just have a feeling Tisha is gonna just go in to kill in this fight, right?" And I said, "You know, for some reason I had that feeling too." And it's like you look like you were on a mission, like you were like looked like you were Tisha Torres 2.0 just in complete destroy mode you know was was that how you felt or or you know what was your mindset and what what made you look like so aggressive a lot of women are not able to finish each other because so many women are really good and your 115 pounds is not that heavy but you look like you were just you know laying a smackdown on that girl i just motivated motivated to excel and to get back to where I once was and, you know, to hit that top 10 and eventually get that, you know, title shot. Um, I actually wanted the fight to continue more. I had so much more that I wanted to try out mm -hmm. um, in the fight and see if it, it could work. So I'm excited to get back in there Saturday and try new things and uh, get to do things that I wasn't um, able to get done my last fight since it did end quickly, which isn't a bad thing. Right. But, uh, it's in the gym it's only so much you know you're not 100 percent, and you don't want to kill the, your training partner you like them but in the fight um you know you want to do as much damage as you can without a doubt and there's so many uh experienced uh women at straw weight but the bottom line is you know you're right up there and uh you know i know you have a history with the champ rose namunas if you fought again it would be the rubber match i'm sure you'd be down for that yeah, we're, I'm definitely probably going to meet her once again in the cage. Uh, until then, you know, we have been training partners. Um, so, you know, we, we know eventually it's going to happen. Yeah, that's right. You and, and Raquel both have been up in Colorado on occasion or, or somewhat regularly for the last few years, right? No, I, I live there. I've been living there for the past four and a half years. I just, in the beginning, I was doing my camp still at ATT, but right. for the last, like, Two years has been solid back in Colorado. And that was what, Elevation Fight Team, Factory X? No, I, um, my main gym is a striking gym, Pound for Pound Fitness, and then uh, I go somewhere else for jiu-jitsu. I just train at a few different places. Sounds good. So with your partner, Raquel, she's two weight divisions higher than you. Can you get a lot of good work with her and give her a lot of good work or is the what does the weight difference make you not preferred partners or is maybe the your relationship also something that would make you not preferred training partners uh, a little bit of both to be okay. honest with you um she helps me a lot in my training she obviously is she's like 30 to 40 pounds bigger than me yeah. uh, at all times so um, it is hard for me in that way, but like at the end of the day, her pushing me and she's able to just keep coming at me for 15 minutes and putting her weight on me. It's really frustrating, honestly, yeah. but um, my opponents aren't going to be 150, 160 pounds. They're going to be maybe 125, 130 by right. the time we're in the, you know, in the cage. Um, so yeah, that really helps me. And I am a great training partner for her. I'm fast and I can do, throw some crazy things. You know, I can fight Southpaw Orthodox. But at the end of the day, when it comes to her really, really getting down to nitty gritty, she needs somebody bigger than me. Yeah. Um, I can't like be a, a full training partner. She can't punch me, you know, for real. Right. <laughs> she gives me a, a great look for myself, but if she was to really punch me, she would hurt me. Yeah. So uh, yes and no, we help each other out in, in different ways. Makes sense. So your style has been changing a little bit as time as time has gone by in the beginning you know it seems like you really liked the striking and you had some concept of the grappling now it seems like your grappling has got better over the years what would you say the biggest difference in your your overall skill set is between your first couple of years and and right now well when i first started i came from a you know traditional karate background and i was a kickboxer for four years before i even started mma so striking definitely was my you know number one go-to um, and then eventually, you know, I started doing jujitsu more and, uh, wrestling. I, I really had like no wrestling in the beginning at all. Some jujitsu, um, just over the years I've, I've, excuse me, come to like all aspects of MMA. And I, I truly feel like I'm a well-rounded fighter. 
uh, my striking is really, really great. My wrestling's great. My jiu jitsu is, you know, great as well. You know, I'm still working on all of those arenas. I definitely prefer striking, but I'm not scared to go to the ground or wrestle with anybody. Um, I just feel like now I'm just an overall great fighter. Back then, I was predominantly known for sh being a striker. So, um, you know, I think you just keeping, you have to evolve. If you just stay, if you're just a great striker, I don't think that's, you know, going to get you that far. No, definitely not nowadays. You know, there's just, you know, everyone's at least good in a couple of the skill sets, if not all three. Well, we're going to keep you just a few more minutes out of respect for the time that, uh, that we agreed upon. And I really appreciate it. Let me see what I can throw you in the last few minutes. Uh, may I ask, are there any fights that you're looking forward to watching at UFC 265 or any friends or acquaintances or teammates on the card? Uh, no teammates, no real true like friends but i um i'm friendly i guess you would say with derek lewis um we're like fight friends i guess and i'm looking forward to his fight and i um hope he does well yeah that should definitely be interesting it's funny because yeah from from the lowest weight class in the ufc <laughs> you're friends with the guy in the highest weight class in the ufc he's a character that's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun um if you win this fight Obviously, you know, you're definitely got to be in talks to, to fight with Rose, but do you feel like you would maybe need to win one more after that, or, or, or what would be your thought as far as what would be fair if you were Mick Maynard or Sean Shelby? Oh, when I win this fight on Saturday, I definitely believe um, I need another fight before I go for a title shot. Um, and whoever's there at that point, I'd be, you know, more than happy to fight. But yeah, I see myself winning this this weekend, then taking another fight, getting another solid win. Then at that point, I believe um, it'd be my turn. Very cool. Um, you have spent nine years, I think, in MMA, and you're still young at 31. Do you have any any thoughts about? expiration date and i know when someone's on a winning streak and you're doing great you're high contender there's no reason to think of retiring but do you ever think like at 35 you you definitely want to be done or 34 or two more years or just as soon as you can get a title shot any any plans in your mind uh i i, I always say like maybe three years from now because i really do want to have kids one day mm -hmm. um but you know that can change right now i'm happy uh where i'm at and fighting and my goal right now is to become champion so you know those things are on the back burner uh but yeah i definitely have a, a, a few more years still left in me makes sense any any fights on the horizon for raquel yeah she's fighting september 18th um i think it's going to be in vegas we're not sure yet nice opponent unnamed as of yet uh no it's named P P panny Piazza. oh, oh interesting like that. yeah know. That's an interesting yeah. fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I look forward to that. Yeah. La last thing, if you had to give any advice to up-and-coming female MMA fighters, what would you say? I would definitely say find a reputable gym, uh, hopefully a gym that has other women or you know people your size. Take your time. Have fun with it. Um, don't too, put too much pressure on yourself. Um, yeah, those are probably my biggest things to tell you. <laughs> awesome. What's the best place for people to support you on social media? Uh, Tisha Torres, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm most uh, frequent my Instagram. Awesome. Well, Tisha, you're a class act. You're a great fighter. Also, I've always been an admirer of the condition that you've gotten into. You're always in amazing shape, like never out of shape. And so big respect uh, to you. And it's so awesome to have uh, this chance to finally talk to you after watching you for nine years. Can't wait to see you kill it. Take home that W from Angela Hill uh, this Saturday. We'll be cheering for you. Sweet. Thank you, guys. You have a good night. You're very welcome. You too. Good night. Right, bye 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 and that was the tiny tornado tisha torres what a very nice chill mellow woman wouldn't you say absolutely yeah i'm just about messing my mic here yeah i know right then my mic was slipping also but yeah uh, such that's a, not your mic that's your that's your my earpiece <laughs> <laughs> you got the mic going off you're in your mouth though it, they're not the same thing Colin. That, that's true you're right sometimes uh, i, I have my, to let you know that the way my mind has been lately with all kinds of stuff yeah going on, i can't but, tell the difference between my mouth and my ear but <laughs> At least Tisha can, and she will be using her fists and uh, hopefully not receiving any punches. In the I, I, I have her on this fight going up against Angela Hill. Uh, yeah. uh, and, you know, Angela Hill had a, a, quite the terror for a little while, but, uh, you know, she 
It kind of <laughs> you know she her two losses Angela's were split decisions. So if Angela didn't lose those two split decisions, then she's on like a five or six fight win streak. Um, Tisha is on a two fight win streak, but yeah, Tisha, but one of those shouldn't have been a split decision. It was pretty with obvious. Angela, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. But Tisha, Tisha has fought every one there is out there. I mean, she, like I said, she's split two fights with the current champion Rose Nami Yunus. She fought Wei Li Zhang. She fought Marina Rodriguez. You know, um, Michelle Waterson. Claudia Cadella, Cadella. That's is that. No, no, that's not her. No, that's her. I think that's Angela, right? This is Angela. Yeah, forget that. She didn't fight some of those last people, but she's fought. If you go to Tisha, that that'll be great. Then I can read the correct names. Then uh, yeah, <laughs> you're Tisha, not you're not following where I'm going. There we go. I got Tisha's fought. Yeah, look at the killers that she fought and didn't get the decisions against, but did go the the distance with all of them. Marina Rodriguez, a killer. Wei Li Zhang, former champ, a killer. Joanna Yunjacek, former champ, absolute killer. And Jessica Andrade, former champ. Wow, three out of those four were champions that managed to squeak by and get a decision was, yeah. against Tisha and Marina Rodriguez, who many people are saying. I would say maybe, she's the next one. Maybe a champion, yeah. So yeah. Tisha, if she gets beat, it's only by absolute killers. So Angela's tough, but I think Tisha's going to put it on her and, uh, you know, definitely nice. Kind of kind of a repeat of what happened. Uh, yeah, she did. She did beat her six, six years ago. Yeah. I, I was going to mention that. I guess I maybe did briefly, but but then we didn't really go she off brought of that. Up. Yeah, you know, and um, but yeah, definitely. I, there was definitely more questions I could have asked, but we, you know, she's running around like crazy. Not only that, but when you're fighting four days from now, it just giving us 20 minutes we're super excited and happy and while i could have uh, spent 10 more minutes asking her great questions talking about how the rematch might play out different than the other one we just didn't have time and that's it but big respect and big love to tisha torres um mm -hmm. so we do have a little bit of time here because our next guest is not for about uh 15 minutes so why don't we do something we haven't done for about a month or so is the colin and adam breakdown and, and analysis yeah let me go i mean we do a little bit every week but it's been uh, less this last month we've just been let, had a lot of guests yeah let's start out with the yeah. let's start with miles yeah, Johns. there we go okay so miles Johns is a favorite pretty substantial favorite really good fighter he just has that one loss on his record in the ufc where he got caught by the flying knee against uh, Mario Batista. Otherwise, he's a killer. Um, great team over there in, in uh, Dallas, Texas, Fortis MMA. And uh, Miles is a really good dude. We're gonna talk to him later. And uh, yeah, he he really should beat Anderson Dos Santos. Anderson Dos Santos is a tough guy. He did just beat Martin Day, but I think Martin Day's on his yeah, way yeah, out of the Martin UFC is. if he's not already out. And then he did lose to Andre Ewell and Ned Naramani, guys that are not necessarily setting the world on fire. So, you know, on paper, this shouldn't be a big problem for Miles Johns. I know that Miles takes everything quite seriously. Anderson's but... not, he's not a slouch by any means. No. And I do feel. No. This fight is going to be an absolute banger. Yeah, I think it's going Anderson to be, throws down. He yeah, does he, throw down. he does throw down. But, I think this yeah. is going to go pretty close to the distance. I think Miles is going to walk away with it just because he's a beast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, I, I'm not even saying that just because he's coming on here next. Right, but no, he's, he's he, great. Miles Johns is a freaking I, warrior. I, I think he has this one, but I think it's going to be a, 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 a nice little war. I am surprised at how low this is on the card, Colin. It just doesn't make sense to me, but at yeah. the same time... Maybe we're once the, in a the while. matchmakers are getting better. I think. The, yeah, so. <laughs> the, yeah. Once in a while, the 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 bout order is wrong online, um, but it's so hard to say. I mean, you know, they because they've let's got see this, where this one has this, it at. Yeah, they've got this like only the fourth fight into like a twelve fight card. Yeah, I would have or it, well, ten fight. I would put the. I would personally uh, be putting it up above uh fiziev and green and eh. yeah. I mean, bobby green is such a veteran and fiziev is killing it but i would say this if not above them definitely uh higher up on the card than it is yeah although you know what they, let's continue on and we'll talk about maybe why so manel cop and uh oday osborne i would think they would be above them but both of those guys have been kind of killing it although they both have i think a loss I, you know what i mean the bottom line is yeah i would say miles johns anderson so Sto santos should be uh higher but anyway miles johns we both have in that fight manel cop and odie osborne manel cop is coming up from flyweight and ode osborne as a guy who fought at featherweight and is now at bantamweight so ode is definitely going to be the bigger man taller by like four inches naturally bigger guy 
uh cop is very very tough ode is what one and one in the ufc now ode is yeah one and one he did lose his ufc debut against brian kelleher how do you, you kelleher's a double double tough dude you make your fight pro debut against kelleher to me that sucks but bottom line is he fought hard he got caught and then he came back in his second ufc fight a year later a full year later because of covid um, not him having COVID, but I think just not enough fight opportunities for all the fighters. And he he looked great. He smashed Jerome Rivera in 26 seconds of the first round. So Odie is for real. Starboy Menel Cop. I think he's also one and one. No, he isn't. He's 0 and two in the UFC. His first. Mm-hmm. Well, look at this. He was talking about being thrown to the wolves in your first fight. Alexander Pantoja in your UFC debut. That's even worse. Being thrown to the dogs. That being thrown to Brian Keller and and Cop went the distance with Pantoja. Uh, then in the ne- oh this next fight he lost a split decision against yeah. the tough Mateus Nicolau. So Manel man, he I've got to go with Cop on this one actually. His because, back's against yeah. the wall. He wants it. He should be one and one probably because of that split. And he realizes though if he loses this, that's three and that could be three and out. Yeah, well, so, a- absolutely. Yeah, I, but he's against a much bigger man. But, you know, sometimes... And he uh, might have secured a four fight, though, for being the, the, the walking duck, more or less. Yeah, They'll do that you sometimes. You mean sitting duck. You mean just with the fact that they threw him in with... He's not a running duck, for sure, no, flying duck. Hard to say. I don't even know if they have four fight contracts, but they might. But anyway, because of that fight, I was they really leaning do. Ode. But because of how much Cop, uh, his back is against the wall... I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off that fight. I'm gonna lay off that fight. But what do the odds have it? I think the odds have it is almost even. Cop it it and, is about even with. Uh, they the, actually no, they've got no, they've got cop a fairly significant favorite. Yep, and, yep. Then you there know what? We it's weird. But, so you know what? I would I would call it a dog or pass in that fight, and I wouldn't play pay much on the dog. But in reality, Ode is the bigger man, and he's coming off a great TKO win. Um but Cop's back is against the wall. I don't know. I mean, to me, this fight could go either way, but Cop really needs to win even more than Ode. But those odds, I wouldn't lay. I don't I don't. I actually agree with the odds. Well, you believe in the smaller man with his back coming off of two losses in a row, even though one of them was split. But, yeah, I it could happen. He needs to win, and it's. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Very exciting. I mean, MMA math, we all know, doesn't no, work. And sure. you, you look at that yeah. level of competition that he's faced the, yeah. in those two fights. It's just a... Uh, outrageous yeah in comparison to Kelleher it's just it's at a lighter weight class though though that's I know I get that but we're we're talking levels of the game here yeah that's true for him to have hung with Pantoja Alexander Pantoja in his first is huge yeah okay Carolina Kowalkiewicz this is an unusual fight Carolina Kowalkiewicz against Jessica Penny Jessica Jessica Penny had like a violation for steroids or something and she was actually suspended for three or three and a half years uh, Carolina Koval- Kovalkiewicz has lost four in a row, and it's interesting she's still in the UFC. Kovalkiewicz came in and won a few fights. A very tough Polish fighter. In fact, she fought Joanna Jacek in her fourth uh, UFC fight. She had gone three and zero, oh, and it just seemed like fighting Joanna. She do- actually made it a tough fight. I remember that. But then back to back, she lost to Joanna, got subbed by Claudia Gadelia. She came in and beat Jody Escabel, who's no longer in the promotion. She she squeezed by Felice Herrig when Felice was on a streak, and then she hit a wall with four fight lose streak. However, look at the girls that she lost to: Jessica Andrade, a beast, and I remember Andrade just caught her maybe I think uh-huh. with a body punch or something. Then her next fight against our friend, the karate hottie Michelle Waterson, she was outpointed there. And then look at her next fight, did an absolute killer, Alexa Grasso. She got sh- and then right after that, another absolute killer, Shao Nan Yan. So she's on a four fight lose streak, but it's but it's been four very tough women. On the other on the other side, Jessica Penne, who was also in the Ultimate Fighter reality house seven years ago with our previous guest Tisha Torres, she had four years yeah four years four off. years out she was coming off of a three fight lose streak she had been in the m actually yeah she got in the ufc in 2014 she beat randa marcos in a split she lost three in a row but against three very very tough women joanna and who just literally pulverized her 
She got stopped by Jessica Andrade right afterward. She fought Danielle Taylor, who's not in the same league as Andrade and, and, and Yun Jacek, but is very tough in her own right. And she lost to her and then got suspended for three plus or four years. In her comeback fight, she did squeeze by Lupita Godinez. Um, so this is a weird fight. I all respect to both of these. It's women. weird enough. I think the odds makers have this one right too. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's too so close. To call. Yeah, it is. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the bottom. I will say this though. I hate to say it, but winner probably goes home as meaning no more UFC contract. And I don't. L- think, loser goes home. Loser. What am I saying? Winner. They. You never know. If they, I tell you what. If the fight. Maybe stinks, both of them go home. If the fight stinks, they both may go home. <laughs> but with all respect, I don't wish for anyone to lose their job. I really don't. And these women uh, have no. paid their dues. These are very, very tough veterans. Um, tough fight. No way to know what's going to happen there. Um, uh, I will say this though. Jessica Penne is a jiu-jitsu black belt. Uh, for for several years, I believe. And Kowalkiewicz is a Polish striker. So if the fight stays on the feet the whole time, then Penne is just going to get pieced up. If it gets to be on the ground and there's a lot of scrambles, she's in big trouble. Possibly can get subbed by Jessica Penne. Um, next fight up. Hey, this is an interesting one. The veteran Ed Short Fuse Herman against Alonzo Menifield. So Ed Herman, and this is his record we're looking at here, right? Yeah. No, this no, Menifield? this is Menafield. It is, okay. Menafield also coming out of Fortis MMA with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, hype behind him. So he won his first fight, if we go back the other way so I can see him. So uh, first fight he wins uh, stopping Vinicius Morera, who I think may or may not still be in the promotion. His second fight, he stopped Paul Craig, a man who is on a killing streak now. In fact, he may have been the last man to beat Paul Craig, possibly. Or maybe Shogun may have beat Paul Craig after that. But he beat Paul Craig, then he he, he ran into a very determined Devin Brown Bear Clark, who was a guest on our show a couple times, and he did lose. And then he ran into just a, a, a much more experienced fighter in OSP, Ovince St. Prue, and St. Prue caught him in an interesting fight. And so coming off two losses in a row... He went up against kind of a last-second replacement in Fabio Charant, and he did beat him. Now, Ed, short fuse Herman. Look at how many UFC fights this man has. It's got to be like 20 or more. His, look at that. When was his first year of the UFC? 2006. 15 years. Wow. 15 years in the UFC. So Ed Herman has always been, back in those days, pretty much the best fought the best. They really right. did. There were just there was no there was no matchups that for sure that guys were minus five hundred. Everyone was like almost even or minus two hundred plus two hundred. Anyway, um, three fight win streak. Well, that was going back years. Wins, loss, wins, losses. He hit a bad streak in two thousand sixteen to two thousand eighteen where he lost uh, to Nikita Krylov. No shame in that. Nope. Krylov is a beast. He lost to C B Dalloway, who was just at the tail end of his prime, I think, in 2017, and just out-wrestled him. And then he barely lost to Gian Vellante, the split decision. If that wasn't a loss, then he'd be on a four-fight winning streak now, but instead he is on a three-fight winning streak, stopping Patrick Cummins' uh, decision over Cadiz Ibrahimov and getting that Kimura in an upset against a talented young man they call Slow Mike Rodriguez. So coming off a, a three fight win streak, the, the man's about forty years old though, isn't he? Let me see. The odds are yeah, Herman's forty. Yes. Yeah, Herman is a dog here. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah he's about yep. two and a half one to, to one dog. Um, I mean, you're talking a thirty three year old Menafield going up against forty year old Herman. Forty year old Herman. And I, <sighs> I mean, the it makes sense. Menafield on paper and because of age, but I'll tell you, Herman coming off of three fight win streaks, these veterans. Are, are really surprising. And I'll tell you what... They can show up, man. They, they, they really can. And the way you said that is exactly right. What happens is when you get a guy who's in his late 30s or, or, or 40 or very early 40s and he has a good training camp and he's not injured and he's getting good night's sleep and he doesn't have any bullshit going on in his life, personal life or anything, and he's focused as hell, that dude can turn the clock back and once in a while fight like he fought when he was 30. You know, and we see it time and time again. Everyone's like, yeah. 40 is not that old, though. It, it really I mean, is. You've, it really you've is. got another five, six you years. You could, depending on who you are, yeah. But the bottom line is, like, if Herman's, if this is a good the training camp. Heavyweights probably can't go that long for yeah, the most the, part. The heavier the weight, though, the, the longer shelf life you do tend to have. But 
Herman can do this. I, you know, and then Alonzo Menefield off of just one win. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, probably Menefield wins, but Herman's dangerous. I don't know if I touch that fight. What do you think? Uh, I am actually, uh, I don't know if I want to, but I, I, this might be my dog pick. I think I, I'm, I'm a huge fan yeah. of Herman. You so. do have to be careful because Menafield is a tank. He's oh, I know short he for is, the weight but class. We're he's also short, talking Herman, but he's powerful. But yeah, Herman. If the fight gets on the ground, if there becomes, if there's a lot of scrambles, or if Herman gets on top, big problem for Menafield. So, so. You, you've, you've got two OGs that I, I always say watch out for. And actually, there's a third one now. Yeah. Um. Uh, Matt Brown kind of proved himself recently, but uh, Jeremy Stevens and and Ed Herman and yeah. and and Matt Brown, I guess yeah, now yeah, too. Yeah. Those are the three that, that it's like, man, they can come back any second. Yeah. You just and, yeah, these and, guys to turn back the clock. They can Cow, push you. Cowboy did it for a second he too, did. but I. Win it, yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. I think. Yeah, okay. No. Vince Morales and Draco Rodriguez. Uh, you know, I think Vince will win that fight, but I don't think most people know enough about those guys. And and I've done some research, but with some other shit going on, I've kind of forgotten the research I did. So I can't really speak in an educated fashion on that. So let's go on to the next one. Bobby Green, the man they call the King. He may only have eight or nine ufc fights but um but uh is also a super experienced veteran and uh do we want to you know what though our next guest why don't we why don't we get ready for that i hate to cut cut myself off like that no it's all right you, you just went on a roll and i'm sitting back listening people are probably looking at the screen and yeah. being like uh what's this guy in the glasses doing yeah exactly here <laughs> i was that's so right before... of that we were going to get rid of the glasses but uh <laughs> I'll have Whatever. to do that where my next time when my eyes get uh before we hop into our next guest here, I want to go ahead and say thank you so much for tuning in. Watch another episode of MMA Power Hour with Colin Crandall over there and myself, Adam Rorta. Right. Uh, make sure to head on over to Nessa's Hemp and uh, get yourself a discounted bottle of uh, full full spectrum hemp oil. It is the highest quality CBDA product on the market. It is MMA PH dot ness's hemp dot com Absolutely. again that is mma ph dot ness's hemp dot com also head on over to our social media it's at mma power hour head on over to our website mma power hour dot com and give it a look see lou uh because we have a lot of awesome things in the works here and we do, indeed we are a full on. spectrum mma uh talk and information and news show as well full full spectrum and fully optimized right adam yep and we have uh, audio podcast from dylan bowker and uh, yeah. a couple other guys so oh, uh, oh, oh. Yep. Oop, skype there we go uh, it, our, our second guest is that tan it is tan okay yep. so i got these wrong so bear with me that is all right yep he's waiting I just want to make sure I get that right before I start hopping around, and we will go straight into it. Rock and roll. And I'm trying to call the wrong one accidentally. Oh, that's not good. He's gonna all teed up. And, no, it didn't ring. Skype dance. <laughs> Han, can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Fantastic. All we need you to do is hit the video button, and we will be ready to rock and roll. We got you, excellent. If you see yourself, you're good to go. We are live, so let me give you a proper introduction as I always do. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited to have this guest also for the first time. Uh, and uh, One Championship is killing it. We've had other champions on the show, uh, several of them, including Adriano Marias, Arjan Singh Buller, Christian Lee, and uh and i believe that uh there may have been one more i don't know why i'm forgetting but the bottom line is uh, we would like to welcome another one the awesome one championship featherweight champion mr tan lee welcome to the show tan oh thanks for having me guys i appreciate it my pleasure okay so let me make sure because i can't be leaving out anyone that we've had. We had Christian Lee, we've had Arjan Singh Buller, we've had Adriano Marias, and then I think we had the previous heavyweight champion in Brandon Vera. That's what it was. And so we're rocking, we're looking to to show some love to one championship. You guys are amazing. Now you fight in one, but you were born and raised in, in the United States or were you born somewhere else? 
Nope. Born and raised in the U.S. Uh, I was born in uh, Owensboro, Kentucky, small town out there. Moved to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana when I was five uh, for a two-year job for my dad, and uh, that was in 1990, so we never left. <laughs> very, very cool. Now, the one person I know whose last name is is Lee, L-E, would be Kung Lee, and I know he's Vietnamese background. Is that your background as well? It is. It is. Very good. Have you ever met Kung Lee? I haven't. Uh, I've, I've texted him back and forth a couple times just uh before uh, I secured this contract with one, just kind of exploring options. But uh, no, Kung's awesome and looked up to him coming up in the rankings and watching him bust people's butts. And uh, it was uh, it was always fun watching him fight. He's a uh, he's awesome, man. Absolutely. He really, really is. I and a lot of people don't know. Good. That's just good. A lot of people don't know that he didn't get into the he didn't get into the UFC until he was like 36 or 37, and I think even in Strike Force he was like 33. So he was killing it in San Shu. I don't know if you were ever to look on YouTube and look at that, but man, when he was in his 20s and, and even really early 30s, he was just a killer. And I think that he was still good, but I I once mentioned to him because we've had him on the show a few times. I said, you know. I it would have loved to have seen you be in MMA in your 20s or early 30s. And even though it doesn't mean that you can't do it because you're evidence that you're still killing it, but I think that, you know, that he had fought for so many years by the time he fought in MMA, he had a lot of wear and tear on him and uh, and, and was still a legend and is, is such a great guy too. Uh, he, you know, I mentioned this once in a blue moon, but we were, uh, he was, uh, we've been doing this for four and a half years and I think he was like maybe the fifth or sixth interview I ever did. And I've done like literally almost a thousand interviews now. And I remember Damn. I was asking him about all kinds of stuff about what he might want to talk about or what he might not want to talk about or what's going to piss him off or what's going to whatever. And he said, you know, Colin, he said, this is your show. He said, you can ask what you want to ask. And he said, I respect your show. And he said, if you're going to ask something that I don't want to talk about, I'll just say I don't want to talk about it. But he said, don't worry that much about what uh, your guest is wanting when it's your show. And that like gave me confidence when he said that I was like, damn, you know what? That's right. I, you know, and it didn't make me have any less respect for my guests, but because of what he told me, I, I, I just all of a sudden felt more in the groove. I felt like, you know, yeah. having the, having respect for your guests is always there, but having a little more respect for yourself, I think is, uh, it doesn't ha it's not a zero sum. You don't have to take away respect from other people to give it to yourself. You can kind of just add on. Like icing. <laughs> exactly. It's really true. And and coming from him, it really meant a lot because I knew he was a veteran. He had been in the game for a long time. He was like 40 years old and he was an actor and a stunt man and all this stuff. And like, so, you know, it, it, you know, it really, it really gave me a boost in confidence from there. And so I'll always, uh, always really appreciate Kung Lee in that. And so you're fighting in a, and a huge organization, the biggest MMA organization outside of the USA, the biggest organization in Asian countries, and you're an Asian American guy. Do you feel the kinship with the league because the fact that it's in Asia and such a, such a huge Asian audience, do you get the love from the community even though you're American or, or how does that work? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was really surprised at the, uh, the amount of like love and support that that comes through, you know, like social media or messages or whatever, uh, from that side of the world, man. It's um, it's insane. It's really cool to feel the energy in the arenas when when we had fans, obviously, um, able to come in and watch fights, feeling that energy, and then just feeling the the constant messages from these guys, just you know, support, respect, you know, appreciation for for the things that we do and. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to live my life the best way I can and, and do do what I think is right and fight the way I think is best for me and my family and uh, and, and to obviously secure the doves as much as possible. And, you know, these guys really appreciate it and, and they, they make sure you know it, too. And I think it's awesome. My uh, one of my first trips overseas, uh, I was I was fighting Yusuf uh, Sajalaya, great, great opponent, tough guy. Um, but just walking around the, the shopping malls and stuff during fight week, uh, after training or before training or whatever, just feeling the energy from those guys and just 
you know, people stopping you, taking pictures, things like that. It's really cool to, to see how in tune or in touch with uh, the MMA scene uh, that, that the fans are. And it's uh, maybe I'm just getting a, a small dose of it from each little venue that I visit. Uh, but the energy I felt and the fan respect and appreciation I'm getting from those guys is, is ridiculous, man. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, different but the same as the fans from the U S you know, it's a different energy, right. but it's, uh, it's awesome. Always awesome to get the, the, you know, the acknowledgement, the kudos or whatever, but just knowing that guys appreciate the way you fight and you put on good shows and they love watching. And you know, that's part of what we do here. Absolutely. I remember way back and I've been an MMA fan since this is the first time talking. I know once in a while guests will hear me say the same thing, but when it's a guest, uh, not guests, but fans and, and people watching will hear me say the same thing. But when it's a guest that I've never talked to before, I like to throw it out there. I'm such a longtime fan of this sport and MMA fighters. I've been a martial artist since I was young, never a professional fighter, but would compete in school and wherever I was training, striking, jujitsu, Muay Thai. But I actually, when I was very young, had a copy of the press kit for the first UFC fight before it took place and so that's how long I've been watching MMA so a long 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 time and uh, it, you know it's just such an, an amazing sport I remember pride fighting championship did you ever watch any of the prides yeah in in uh, you know reviews like right reruns youtube that kind of thing but it was it was uh that's that's a whole different energy and it's it's so awesome to watch oh yeah man i used to have friends over to watch the pride pay-per-views it was so amazing the beginning man they would have with that music and the firework or the, or the light display and absolutely amazing anyway i remember in those early days in pride in japan our fighters would be recognized and be given that love and respect whereas here hardly anyone even knew who they were because this was back in the days when like mma was banned on pay-per-view i don't know if you know that right but in the 90s it was on like once every three months just a pay-per-view event wow. and then in the that started in 93 come the come the late 90s there got to be a protest because people were saying it was like human cockfighting. And even though they had modified the rules, you know, taken out headbutts and other stuff, there were still people protesting against it. It was called no holds barred NHB fighting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they actually banned it off of all pay-per-view except for satellite. It was only on direct TV wow. and dish, right? I used to have a girlfriend. I'd drive 40 miles to her place and treat her to dinner so we could watch MMA fights at her house because she had direct TV. But I remember that, you know, back in those days, it's like there were no billboards. There was no ESPN. There was no TBS, TNT. There was nothing. And 70% uh, and of people didn't know who the biggest MMA stars were here, but they did in Japan. And I remember thinking, man, I'm glad our guys at least have that over there that people really recognize and appreciate them. Now there's appreciation here, but it's good to know there's appreciation there. You know who I had on the show uh, from one championship, who's also Vietnamese background was uh, B Nguyen. You know her? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I've, uh, I've watched her fight a couple of times. Um, I'm, you know, I'm always watching her fights on YouTube. I follow her on social media. She's, we've uh, messaged back and forth. She's, she's very, very cool person from what I know and a uh, hell of a fighter. Yeah, she is. I think having that weight, allowance now where she doesn't have to get down to 105 she even told me it's just made all the difference in the world you know and uh she's really cool what a beautiful girl and classy and just a warrior so you know definitely good good person her and kung lee and yourself so you guys are like really representing your your ancestors well i gotta say trying to trying to do good here i don't know uh as far as uh, representation goes but i'm just trying to trying to do what I can to, to live my life right and try to uh, make a little bit of money uh, entertaining these fans. <laughs> Absolutely, and you're doing well. You're on a killing streak in one championship, four fights in a row. It's it was, the, was the weight class, because featherweight in one means up to 155, so that would be like in Bellator, PFL, and UFC, that would be lightweight. Uh, was that where you were fighting previously or were you at a different weight class so i've been up and down but um i started my pro career all my amateur fights and uh, my pro career started at 155 okay and then um i started to uh try to figure out the weight cut scenario see how much i could cut did a couple test cuts 
and most of my pro fights are at featherweight at 145 pounds and that's you know that's my home as far as weight classes go and um being a featherweight with one championship allows you to be 155 pounds you just obviously can't dehydrate yourself so they they do a hydration test during your weigh-in so you do have to be you know walk quote unquote walking around at 155 and not dehydrating yourself um because similar to to how they measure like wrestling events and things like that um so it's the weight cuts are phenomenal man i, I don't have to dehydrate myself it's um you know i feel a whole lot safer i feel a whole lot more comfortable during fight week i'm i'm sparring almost all the way up to the fight you know light sparring obviously but right. i'm getting really really good trading up up into you know mid fight week and it's uh it's great having that feeling. And then obviously you weigh in on your, um, you know, your two days before the fight. And, and then, you know, if you happen to pass both of those hydration tests, then you're good to go and you don't have to weigh in fight day. But if you do fail one, one of those, then you weigh in on fight day. And then, uh, yeah, you step in the ring and try to go handle some business. Very cool. Is there a weight limit for, for either the two day before or on the fight day for the 155 featherweight division can you be 157 or 160 or is there a number that you have to be no more so than the, yeah they give you a little bit of an allowance uh, it equals out to about about a pound okay so obviously championship fights are similar so we're at 155 on the dot and then um you know when it's a non-title fight it, it's that leeway they give you a little bit and it equals out to about a pound they but, do everything in kilos and it kind of messes me up <laughs> right i can relate but no one can be like 159 or 160. right so the way that works is if you have to obviously it's, i'm sure it's similar here but you got to come to an agreement with the promotion and the opponent you know there's possible penalties fees things like that you have to figure out and if they want to do a catch weight i think uh there's a way to kind of figure that out but Hopefully we don't run into that issue and I don't have to deal with that problem at all. <laughs> right, and that's good. And you are the champion. Uh, forgive me for not knowing, but have you made one defense or two defenses so far? No, so I just won the title um, last October. Mm -hmm. And I've been dealing with this uh, damn finger injury during right. uh, the fight. I broke my right index uh, middle knuckle. Mm -hmm. And then I also broke uh, um, three bones in my left hand. Those healed fine. Uh, this finger required three surgeries, so it's been a minute. Wow. Um, but back to training um obviously hitting grappling things like that um but it did take some time for that to heal that's the only reason you haven't seen me defend the title yet is okay i was trying to get there asap but um obviously this kind of slowed me down a little bit but we're back on track and hopefully we'll have a, a fight lined up soon so you guys can check it out excellent now did you hear about that fighter a few months ago who actually lost a finger during a fight Man, I did. I've seen a couple of photos. That is ridiculous, man. Holy shit. Yeah, what that's, happened that's there? Rough. What's that? What happened there? I didn't even see So that. I don't know. All I know is they lost the finger. Oh. It was in his glove, but they lost it. They were apparently, oh. this is hearsay. I'm, I'm just going off of social media right, from what right, I saw. Right. But apparently they had fans looking for it, you know, everybody around the cage looking for it, but it was stuck in his glove and he didn't know it. Oh. Somebody correct me if I've got that story wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it went. That's insane to me. Actually yeah. insane. That is nuts. I mean, that's, that's just, you know, you, you know, I mean, injuries happen. That's the one thing is this isn't for the faint of heart. I mean, you know, it, it's funny because if you see the fight from like cage side where you're really close you can hear the impact you can you know you can see the impact on the body you can see the marks on the legs and the you know the 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 face and everything i think sometimes some people are watching fights only on tv and it can kind of make it a little bit like homogenized it can make it kind of almost like less real like it looks like nobody's getting hurt right because nobody's yeah. yelling out in pain and and i think a lot of people are just thinking oh well i could do that i just go in there and start throwing down and this and that and the reality is most people can't do it you know it's a it's a really hard sport and one of the things i like to say is uh combat sports is a bad career to not be good at and be doing it am i right 
you got that right. It's it's uh it's tough too because you see a lot of these guys towards the end of their career and they start taking a little more damage and, and shit. I mean, you see guys at the beginning of their career take a lot of damage and try to make it through fights that way, and it's it's a tough way to make a living. And I'm be honest with you, I love martial arts and I love the sport, but if um if if I fought in a way that I had to take that much damage that I see some of these guys doing, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's not worth it to me. No, my um, uh, you know my my brain my being able to talk to my kids and my future grandkids is way more important than making some money you know i'll, I'll do martial arts on my own free time at home in my garage i you know i, I don't have to do these things i do it because i want to and i enjoy it and i love it and i'm good at it but man if it if it, there was a certain cost associated with it, it's not worth it you know what i mean you see some of these guys come in there and then take a shit ton of damage man and and it's it hurts to watch because yeah. you know what they're going through yeah and you know, actually kind of tying into what you were talking about, just being able to hear cage side. You know, I, I ran across a video a couple of months ago with uh, like Tony Ferguson yes. fighting uh, Gacy and yes. just no fans. And you're just hearing the thuds, man, the hits yeah. over and over. Like, I didn't sign up for that. You know what I mean? No. Like, I'll, I'll die yeah. in there. I don't care. Yeah. But I'm not fighting in a way that makes that the way I make money. You yeah. Know, it's just yeah. not happening. And that's why I fight the way I fight. And uh you know hopefully uh we continue not to take a ton of damage in fights. yeah without a doubt and i mean that was you know that was a terrible thing to see and it, it, in one way it just showed the absolute heart of tony ferguson because obviously at some point you could see he was seeing stars he was shaking his head and after he was getting hit and it's like you just almost feel the referee maybe was had so much respect for him that he didn't want to stop it and it probably could have been stopped earlier because he hasn't been the, been the same since then and that was just an enormous amount of punishment and that's that's not a good thing he's the amazing thing is he still sounds good when you talk to him and but yeah i mean he he probably proved he has to have one of the best chins in all of mma because gaethje has put people to sleep and he literally hit him like a hundred times it that's, seems like that's def he's definitely high on the list as yeah. far as chins go. yeah with that, um obviously you know. chins only go in one direction yeah. you know what i mean so it, it sucks to kind of to watch a great fighter like that take damage like that and then you know the next time out it, it won't be quite the same right know? right and uh it, it's great to see that you know him doing interviews and talking on social media and he's he's it's you don't see uh yet right. as far as you know effects go the issue is that you really don't know what's going down in there that's right uh, I, I've been concussed twice in, in my life, and that that's nothing to play with. You know, no, what I, mean? I, no. I take that I take that very seriously. Yeah. And if I had to off of concussions, I'd retire. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and some people have. I, I, yeah. Fight the way I fight, you know, and try not to take as much damage because that's a that's a rough way. It is to, to live. Right, it is because you've got Floyd Mayweather who hasn't taken much damage in his whole career. His defense was that good, and. It wasn't it's a lot of his fights weren't that entertaining. A lot of people hate him because he would go in there. But it's it's not about necessarily making fans when you're doing something as dangerous as fighting, you gotta fight smart. I remember in the old UFC, Mark Kerr said, I'm not here to try to show people watching how tough I am. You know, I'm here to try to get the W and get out and be healthy and, you know, support uh, you know, people that I take care of, you know, and and 100 percent man i uh i i look up to floyd mayweather he's 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 a, a genius in the ring yeah. he does a really good job obviously he's a good businessman we all know that but yes. um you know the way he goes in there and he just does not take damage and obviously that might stall out his offense a little bit but guess what he's he's doing it the right way that's how you want to fight if yes. you're fighting for fighting as a sport as yes. skill is involved as a martial art yes. that's not maybe how you fight to entertain fans and right. that's one thing that you know i tell people all the time in interviews and people that train under me and people that i train with i'm not here to entertain people i happen yep. to knock all of my opponents out if i've won that fight yep um uh, the finishing rate does help as far as quote-unquote excitement goes in my fights but even if i wasn't somebody who touched you and you went to sleep i would fight the same way because of the damage that i'm not taking that's that's the number one thing on the list for me to to be concerned with is taking damage yeah. uh and affecting my life my family life my home life that type of thing absolutely without a doubt and i know you're working to heal up to defend your title is there anybody you have in mind anyone over at one that is like a number one contender or any couple guys you think would make exciting fights 
Man, there's uh, there's a few guys. We've got we've got a, a, a great division that we're working with. Uh, honestly, the guy that I did beat, Martin Wynn, he's a great fighter. Uh, it was a rematch that I thought was going to happen immediately. He's he's an option, obviously. Um, he's he's held the title for a long time. Beat a bunch of really really high profile, good good guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary Tonin's also a name that's been thrown in the mix. Yes, uh, he's up in the top five. Excellent grappler. Um, all of his fights have been in one. Um, not against super high level competition, right, right. Um, but his last fight was against somebody who fought for the title in Matsushima, um, and he beat him handedly, uh, three round decision. Um, that was a good fight to watch. Um, there's a couple other guys coming up in the ranks too in the top five. Christian Lee's obviously in that ranking list. I don't think he wants to fight a featherweight anymore, right, but right. that is the name that I do want to fight, and I'd love to go to lightweight and fight him and possibly have another belt you know what i mean uh, i think that's a, a winnable fight and i think that's a, a, a another big name to chase and then obviously now we're talking about going outside of one but cross promotion stuff has always been big 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 uh, uh as far as my agenda goes as as champion and, and what we're looking to do at one and how to how we're going to prove to the world that we've got some of the best fighters on the planet. You know, we've seen that in some extra UFC fighters coming over and not doing so hot. Right. We've seen that some of our guys going over there and just putting on excellent shows or excellent fights, you know? Yeah. And it's, um, it's something that, that is important to me. And I think it's, uh, moves the sport in the right direction. Without a doubt. And I agree a hundred percent. And you're reading my mind on a couple of these things that I was going to ask you and you jumped in and, and volunteered. So that just shows your uh, ability to really know what people want to hear. And, and, and I really appreciate that you're helping me helps make my job easier. <laughs> nice. I no, like problem. <laughs> no problem. So let me ask you some questions. I think we got about 10 minutes more, eight minutes more with you. So a lot of questions I want to throw at you here, maybe in somewhat rapid fire succession. So, um, okay. 155, is uh, an interesting weight class all around uh, in Bellator, which I think there may be a better chance of maybe having a cross promotion there with the UFC. One day, maybe the UFC will cross promote, but Bellator seems to be more open with it. Uh, you just had AJ McKee, the mercenary, the young gun, come up there and beat Patricio Pitbull at 145. And that was in AJ's backyard in Los Angeles, where I happen to be located. Um, Pitbull now has said okay you're gonna it's gonna go down that way we're gonna go to brazil and defend my 155 title aj's a tall guy anyway and he's already saying he wants to go to 155 so i can see pitbull saying all right i went to your backyard at a lower weight that's harder for me to make and you take me out so now we go to brazil my backyard at 55 how different would that fight play out would you think so I don't think it's going to play out extremely different. Um, the result could be different because those guys, both of those dudes are heavy hitters, great martial, mixed martial artists, yeah. uh, awesome, awesome fighters. I, I like watching them fight myself, um, and I'd love to compete against them one day, both right. of them. Right. But uh, they're, they're excellent fighters. I just don't see it playing out too differently as far as how we saw the exchanges and the movement go. Um, it's just who lands that clean punch, who connects. Um, obviously, that two – and then that two to the head kick was beautiful by AJ, and he took advantage. He capitalized, and that's what both of those guys are going to do. You you hurt one of them, I guarantee you're going to get a finish yeah. um, because of the the ferocity that's in both of those guys, and that's what I pride myself on too. So uh, I don't I don't think it'll be a totally different fight, but as far you know, I can't give you an answer as far as the result goes. But uh, somebody's going to sleep, and I think it's going to be early. Yeah, you could be right. What did you think after AJ? had pitbull hurt and went for the guillotine or guillotine as some people say it before you answer i kind of like it because if you really think about it if someone's staggering and they're on the ground and they're just starting to get up and probably don't know where they are it's actually to go get their neck and then to immediately sink it in and lock it up it's just the chances you're going to get it are really good because they don't even know where they are. But some people would say, man, why didn't he just like piece him up? I mean, it would have been super exciting. He could have th- head plumbed him and thrown a knee and thrown some elbows and just wiped him out. And some other people were thinking like, man, the 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 guillotine, or what if Pitbull would have slipped out of that? It would have been like the all-star stupid move ever. You know, what did you think? Did, did that make sense to you? Was that kind of a, a risk or, or was that actually something that, that you might have done if, if you had been in AJ's position? 
So I think it's a comfortability and a skill set thing, right? AJ is pretty well-rounded, but yeah. um, you can see that he loves when he sinks in those front chokes. You know, you see him sell out in a good way on finishing these jokes, and that's why he has a bunch of submissions and victories, you know what I mean? Yep. But uh, um, it's, uh, you know, I would have finished it differently because of my skill set and my comfort level in certain areas. He obviously has a comfort level there. Once he had him hurt, he wanted to jump to his, what he believed, I think, is his strongest skill set and jumping on that neck and finishing. So, I mean, you'll see different guys play out differently, obviously, based on their comfort level and their skill set. But I think it's all about this right here. What am I going to go to when I have got you hurt and I'm going to, I need to get this finished right now because I've got a million dollars on the line. I have a world championship on the line. My, my health is on the line, right? So I think uh, I think he made a smart decision because he went to where he's comfortable. He's obviously done that a time or two in the gym, a time or two in fights, and finished that very, very well. Um, but there's nothing wrong with the route you take, whether you continue to strike, strike on the ground, or get the finish standing. Um, but I, I think the main thing is to understand that he went at where he's comfortable and where he knew he was going to finish that fight. And you could see it in his eyes. Yeah, that makes sense. You could tell, and you could also just see how, how slick he was in locking that in with his left hand. And yeah, cause so many guys will, will jump for, for a guillotine and not get it. And, and you know what I mean? Guys just pop their head out and then the audience is like, Oh, you know, and you can even see the fighter. Like, you know, I'm sure, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but you're on bottom or you're in a scramble and you go for the choke when you're on bottom and you don't get it. And then there you are flattened out on the bottom. And you just, you know, yeah. right? And sometimes I think if it's a tiring, exhausting fight and both fighters taking damage or the fighter that's going for the choke was taking more damage, it's just that look of almost defeat when you don't get it. The, the guy's like, well, that's it. I guess I'm done. Right, you know? and that's part of that comfort level. If you know you've got a killer guillotine, you know you have your escape routes because you use it so much. You know where to go when it fails. You know how to get yourself back onto top in dominant position or a good guard and where you can start attack, continue attacking to the next uh, submission or, or sweep or whatever. So like I said, it's, it has a lot to do with that comfort level. You can tell, because obviously we've seen what, like uh, McGregor Poirier, McGregor jump, that was a jumping a guillotine. Right? Yeah, that did AJ, not look really like, good to me. Can you tell me your thoughts? I'm sorry to interrupt your Exactly, point. I agree, I agree. It, uh, you know, he might've had a, a comfort level because he submitted, you know, submitted some guys in the gym with it or whatever, but. You could tell it wasn't – he didn't choose to do it at that time at a perfect moment because he created it. Right. He did it because the opportunity arose and he might not have been – things have wasn't going his way on the feet yeah. like he wanted him to. Yeah. But with AJ, you see him – he created that moment right. with the damn, with the kick when and then ended up going after it. And I wouldn't call that – you know, jump in my mind just has like a negative connotation with it. But, right. you know, what – Jump the guillotine or not, he went to that and created that moment and yeah. got the finish. That yeah. that was uh, two different routes, two different results, and you can see how different the path was to get there. Absolutely, because in in the case of uh, of uh, the Bellator title fight, McKee, I think genuinely may be a better grappler than Pitbull. In the case of McGregor and and Poirier, McGregor's trying to put a guillotine on a guy who's been a black belt for like ten years. You know, in fact, right. I honestly think, I mean, like, McGregor is a confident guy, but you almost think when he went for that, it was, he had to be thinking, hey, would this be crazy if I submit this black belt? Ah, let me try it. Right. And it's almost like, I don't know if that's what you're wanting to think in an MMA fight, because Poirier probably went, is this really happening? This guy's trying this. I mean, he's not yeah, he's like, man this yeah. is where it's gonna work out pretty well right he probably said yeah this is great because this is obviously a sign that connor's not liking the striking and now i'm just gonna get out of this and then you know finish it but can connor go anywhere from here man it's weird because he's not that old he's 30 31 32 but he started this game early you know and he's got all this money and like i've heard people say it's harder to get up for your 6 a.m road work when you're sleeping on silk sheets uh, what do you think? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, yes, you're right. He's, it's got to be harder to get up in the morning when you're when you're getting out of a bed like that or, or a mansion like that, right? But, yeah. um, you, you know, I, I guess we've kind of learned from these, uh, these YouTubers that it doesn't matter if you're really good at fighting or really bad at fighting. But for the record, I think Connor's a great fighter. Uh, um, if you've got a lot of fans watching you and following you, 
and cheering you on and paying for pay-per-views, you're still going to get fights. You're yeah. still going to get high profile fights. You're still going to get main card, you know, headliner main event, and you're still going to make a ton of money. So, yeah. Um, I, I learning from these YouTubers, people, if people are tuned in, you're still going to get fights and you're still going to, you're still going to do things to provide for your family. Now, if his goal is to continue to move up to 155 rankings and, and, uh, you know, fight for a title, he always has a chance because he's such a skilled striker and he, yeah. he, his counter fighting is excellent and he's, he does, he did it well. He made a name for himself the way he did it for a reason uh with his mouth but he also knocked a bunch of people out and he can, he can do that he, yeah. he's a good good fighter yeah absolutely. um do i do i think he will move up there and and take all these guys out like he did moving up in the featherweight division i, I don't think so i think he's gonna have some more trouble yeah uh, i don't yeah. think um uh, it's gonna turn out the same way but can he get those fights and can he make a big buzz and make a ton of money from it absolutely yeah without a doubt let me ask you really quick about some of these other fights justin gaethje is set uh to fight uh, michael chandler any prediction on that one? Oh, that's a rough one i'm a big gaethje fan i mean i like chandler too but i'm a gaethje fan and so um i love the way he mixes in the leg kicks with with his striking uh his last two fights i think he's uh changed his striking approach i don't want to say any of his tools his tools are the same but he's He's changed his strategy a little bit, some of his yes. his tactics, and I think it's made a big, big difference. And yeah. he looks he looks really good out there. And uh, you know, uh, Chandler's a, a fast starter. He's got some power. We know he can uh, he can move in and out and shift well. I uh, but I think I think Gaethje brings a lot to the table, and I think he's going to pull that one off. Absolutely, I agree. How about Poirier against Charles Dubronx Oliveira, the title over there in the UFC? Man, that's 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 an awesome fight. Uh, I'm gonna go Poirier, my my homegrown homie. That's right, you, Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He's a good uh, dude. Um, but yeah, Dustin, I think he, I, I think you got that one, dog. Absolutely. And then um, there's so many other great fights at 55. I know Islam Makachev, Habib's training partner, is a beast. He's gonna get. He's got RDA uh, in that fight. Almost seems like a setup for RDA to lose. RDA is gonna have to pull out a Herculean effort. But is it, does Makachev look like he may be the next uh, Habib? Do you think, or do you think he's got a lot left to prove before anyone can say that? I mean, he, he's he's got some stuff to prove, obviously. But man. Uh, we know two things. Khabib is very loyal. Um, so he might be boasting his homie up a little bit. Who knows? But if he's telling the truth, man, that's scary. He's, he's said he's the best wrestler in the room, apparently. And his striking is, uh, is I think, is cleaner and better uh, than Khabib. So if that's the case, man, if he puts it together uh, well, which he looks like he can do, that's that's a scary man. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I think he's going to do some some real damage in the division. Um, but we'll see, you know, RDA is going to be a really good test. I, I, I like the way, you know, I, I kind of, um, started liking RDA more and more when, um, when he put it on, uh, Anthony Pettis Yeah. and I, I was a big Pettis fan at the time. He's a Taekwondo, uh, background. So, you know, I kind of leaned towards that a little bit, but man, that was impressive. And, and, um, obviously moving to to different weight classes and, and he's trying to find his home but he hasn't fought in a minute either but um yeah that's gonna be a tough fight for him he's he's no slouch yeah. he's without, a badass dude without but no. um that's gonna be interesting to watch definitely give me real quick predictions because we a lot of get gotta let you go in about a minute and a half but give me quick predictions this weekend uh ufc kiesa michael kiesa vicente luque and then the heavyweights Derek lewis cyril gone and so I, I saw this meme and I agree with it. It's uh, C Cyril Gan, I think, is uh, better striking, grappling, wrestling, um, and everything in between. With that being said, Derek Lewis, third round KO. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, that was the uh, fan that would go crazy in the Toyota Center if that happened. That would be insane, man. Um, honestly, my brain tells me. Uh, Cyril, right, but uh, right. yeah, I'm gonna go Derek Lewis on okay. this one. He's a right. he's a Houston man, so. Um, and then the other one, man, that's a rough one. I, I I like both guys a lot, so I can't give you a prediction on that one. But I will be a spectator fan watching that one. I, I won't be on one side or the other. I'm just gonna be watching with my eyes and uh, and 
watch an exciting fight. Absolutely. Speaking of exciting fights, one championship is on in the United States every Wednesday night, and I think it's the event from a few hours earlier, so it's just a slight tape delay, I think, or it may be live. No, I think it's a slight tape delay, depending on which coast you're on here in the United States. Um, but the same day as the event, uh, we see it, and I think we see most of it, save for any ring entrances or like that. So it's amazing. Is that on TNT or TBS? Uh, TNT. Awesome. TNT won championship pretty much every Wednesday. Uh, so even though uh, our guest right here is not going to be defending his title anytime this month that's announced, hopefully it'll be very soon when he heals up. Uh, but there is amazing action in one championship. Tell us real quick, best way to support you on social media. Y'all check me out. Uh, pretty much Tan Lee MMA on everything. Uh, my Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Shout out No Society. GLD, go lay down and extend sell your core. Appreciate it, guys. Not a problem. Tan Lee, Louisiana Zone, one championship featherweight champion. Thanks so much, brother. We really appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Take care. And that was the one championship featherweight champion, which means 155. So it's like the lightweight champion here. He's amazing. Four fight win streak. Uh, all stoppages looking for his first title defense over there. Maybe going up one weight class to face our guest from a few months ago, Christian Lee. That would be a killer battle. Christian Lee is a beast, but a real good guy from Louisiana. Anyway, our next guest should be ready. Dr. Adam Roto, whenever you're ready so you can get working there. Ladies and gentlemen, one championship. If you, have, <laughs> if you haven't seen it or if you don't know, you didn't know, now you know. They are killing it. Their fights are so exciting. All the fighters are high Hydrated. No one's fighting depleted at all. They do the hydration tests where your fight can be canceled, save for maybe missing very slightly. And the bottom line is they really, it, with the couple different tests and the way in two days before, you really have it so that people are fighting at a weight much closer to what they walk around with. And Boss Rutan always said the legend, if you're fighting full strength and you've got the, all the synovial fluid in your brain and you're hydrated and you feel strong, that's where people will really see the skills that you have. Uh, and so there's some great fights in one championship. Anyway, our next guest, Skype Dance. Skype Dance, baby. Now watch me have... When the Skype Dance comes. That's true, when the music comes. I'm dancing to the beat of my own drummer. Uh, it's and of course he's we not did. online, <laughs> but it's also saying he is at the same time. Oh, so we'll see what's going let's on. Let's see. If I have to contact him, I will. Yeah, I don't need to call. He he's on another call. Is what that means. Oh, okay. Uh, trying to call you for the interview, my friend. Are you there? Question mark. I am just uh, All right. sending him a message here. Uh, everybody head on over to our social media when you get a chance give us likes comments and shares we appreciate it thank you in advance so much i see a, a lot of you over there at uh, uh facebook on the hannibal tv we're checking us out right now quite a few of you make sure to also hit up a fight tv it's f-i-t-e dot tv all the professional wrestling and uh boxing kickboxing jujitsu everything combat sports related over there Check them out if you haven't already. Make sure to give us a follow. Subscribe. Uh, well, all you got to do is uh, uh, search in the bar, uh, MMA Power Hour, and just follow us. Absolutely. Be able to stay updated with every single show every time we go live and uh, any special events that we may be putting on in the near future. You'll get updates from them. But Fight TV is the best. really is. Fight TV, awesome, and Hannibal the Cannibal. Got to love him. Absolutely. All right, Colin. So our next guest, I, I said uh, I'm ready when they are. And okay, I sent a message too. Okay. Do Perfect. we? You want to look out for a signal, maybe for another oh, minute or two? Or? I, I think my only other option right now. I'm gonna try this. See if this makes a difference. Do 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 do. do. Colin, you're you're the one that's supposed to be talking. That's right. While you're doing that, <laughs> Doctor Adam Rona, instead of sitting here like a deer in the headlights, I will talk. So anyway, you guys know that we were on Wednesday for four years, and then we switched to Tuesday because we don't want to deprive you of any live MMA fighting action. There are the four largest promotions out there. Uh, which include the UFC, One Championship, Bellator, and the PFL. And they're going in sequence all throughout the week, most of the year. Everyone knows the UFC is exclusively on Saturdays. There he is. Let's see. He is uh, 
Oh, he thought it was tw no, yeah, he thought it was 20 minutes later, but it isn't. Um, he's he's well, he's doing something, but he has good service. So <laughs> yeah, I'll just answer right. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. We'll give you a call. <laughs> you yeah you you wanna you wanna see where he is here. <laughs> <laughs> but why not, right? Right. All right. I'm dancing again when there's no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Let me see. Uh. Yeah, that's fine. He says it's quiet in there. Um. Oh man. But yeah, why not? Okay. So maybe we'll try. Uh. All right. Uh. As long as he keeps it safe for work. Yeah, we'll try again. Or if you want it, he's gonna have to call us because it's not. It's not, not going out through. Him. Okay. Let me do that and let him know. I can look forward here. Sounds good. We're trying to get through to you and it's not working. So if you could Skype call us, that would be awesome. All right. All right. Let me see. All right. Let's see. 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 Let's Thursday, you have the PFL. Once in a while, the PFL will decide to go head to head with Bellator and have an event on Friday. I don't know why, but they're mostly on Thursday. And then one championship pretty much has stayed in their lane uh, to stick with Wednesdays on TNT. Although you never know. Uh, there we go. There he is. Hey, Miles, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. All we need you to do, if you can, or okay, good, good. We got the video, fantastic. So let me give you a proper introduction because we are live, ladies and gentlemen. So excited to have this next guest back on the show. One of the more exciting fighters in the UFC bantamweight division out of that amazing school in Dallas, Texas, Fortis MMA. Uh, we're talking about the man they call Chapo Miles Johns. Welcome back to the show, Miles. Hey, thank you for having me again. My pleasure. So you're still killing it over there out of Fortis. It just seems like people that go there, they don't leave. There's just such a great camaraderie with all the guys there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. You know, that's kind of what we were made upon, you know, like it's all you're really fully invested into the gym. You know, there's not a there's not a lot of selfishness. We're here for our teammates and stuff, and that's what made us so strong, you know. And uh, that's what we're going to continue to do. So usually when people come and they feel the vibe and they um, get a feel for like the structure and everything, they like to stay and stick around. Very cool. Now, are you a Texas guy originally or from somewhere else? I'm actually from Kansas, but I've been in Texas for like uh, six, seven years. So I pretty much consider myself a Texan now. <laughs> Very cool. So you are fighting this Saturday, man. I really appreciate you jumping on. We actually just had Tisha Torres on about a half hour ago, who's on the same card with you. So we're getting a lot of love oh, yeah, yeah. Up from UFC yeah, yeah. 265. And uh, it's going to be an exciting card, man. Let me ask you this. With the, the pandemic or COVID era fighting, I think they changed something from where they used to have when it was at a, a, a place like the Toyota Center, it used to be that they had a lot of fighters in like a huge locker room. And they had like locker room A or B, like red corner locker room and blue corner locker room or something. But I think in COVID times, they don't have you guys hanging out together, do they? Um, in the past, they haven't. But all I have fought at is the Apex. So the last time I was in Houston, we did have like, uh, I think there was like three other guys or maybe four other guys in the locker room and more would probably come, but they were later on the card. So they weren't even there yet. Um, but I know the only time I fought in COVID was at the apex and it was all separate rooms and stuff. So um, if it's like that, I'm kind of used to both. You know, I came up on the contender series or it's like that, you had your own room. And I've also fought with there's lots of guys in the room. So um, either way to me, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Very cool. Now, Houston is not right next door to Dallas, but it's not that far. What is it, a two-hour drive, three-hour drive? 
<laughs> How about three and a half, yeah. So that's close enough that you probably have some people coming supporting uh, that are Miles Johns fans, right? Uh, you know, I got a lot of real, uh, my immediate family coming, my wife, uh, my kids, and um, my in-laws. But my dad actually just had a back surgery, and he's doing great, but it was just um, kind of not really in the cards for him to come down. And then my younger brother, who usually corners me, um, had a prior engagement that I kind of just forced him to stick to and not bail out on after this fight was moved back to this date. And um, part of that is just because last time I did come to Houston, um, I had a huge uh, crowd, a ton of support there, and it didn't affect me in a negative way, but obviously that just, um, it wasn't my night that night. So this time I just kind of wanted to switch things up and just make it a strictly business trip, you know? So like I said, my immediate family's coming down and they're going to be there. But aside from that, everybody else is just going to be watching from Dallas, which, um, it's just uh, it's new, but I like it. You know, it's um for just for this just for this uh, type of thing. I wasn't planning on fighting in Houston, so we're just like, you know what? I'm not gonna have everybody switch their plans up and try to make all these adjustments to come down here for this. You know, like um I'm coming down here for business. You know, I'm fighting my backyard, my back alley. It doesn't matter. Um, and what and people being there after not being there it doesn't matter. You know, all that matters to me is when I step in that cage Saturday night and uh, the performance I put on. So, you know, just uh, it, just uh, kind of fun and just uh, kind of a redemption type thing. I came here, very, very uh, little people coming here to watch live, but um, I'm fully focused and uh, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna pay off. Without a doubt. Are they still announcing you uh, from Kansas or are they announcing you from Houston, Texas or Dallas, Texas now, being that you train it over at Fortis and have lived there? Probably I, probably from Kansas because it always says where you were you born and then where you train out of. So probably like out of Kansas, find by way of whatever. And I, and I, like, I, I see myself as a Texan because I love Texas so much, but I mean, my roots are Kansas. Like, I love Kansas. I love going back there. I love the openness. Um, Eventually, I, I want to move to either around that area or somewhere in Texas that has more land. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely not uh, taking away my Kansas roots. You know, Kansas made me. Absolutely. Do you, do you, can you think of a crazy, wild character who's a Bellator fighter from Kansas? Uh, David Caveman Rickles yes, is my the, boy. You know the caveman? He's awesome. Oh, he? yeah, I know the caveman. He's a great dude. I know he's a, he's kind of wild and stuff with his walkouts and in the cage and stuff. But I'm and it's funny. Fans love it. But the dude has a heart of gold, man. I'm telling you, he, uh, he's, he's a real good dude. He really is. And he's got his organization over there, I think, Evolution Fighting Championship or something like that. And I think Bellator was yeah, he's too been, long. Yeah, he's been doing that. Um, and uh, actually, another guy that I met through um, – the, uh, I met David through uh, my buddy Stephen Wynn, who uh, is from Kansas, too. When I first was coming up in MMA, Stephen Wynn was the man on the amateur scene. It was like I was 2-0 and as an amateur, and Stephen Wynn was already like 9-0. Um, yeah, he just, he's been doing it for a while. And um, he was training there, but then he made the move to Fortis after he came to visit me and train there once. Um, he was like, yeah, I got to. I think this is what, what I need to do. And he fought on the Contender Series last year, last summer, and had a – Heck of a fight, heck of a fight. Just ended um ended up not going his way at the last minute, but he has another fight coming up on the contender series. So um yeah, it's a small world. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Good people in the Midwest. I'm originally from Michigan, born and raised. My producer Adam is from Iowa, but also lived in Missouri yeah, for awesome. a while. Yeah, so Midwest, man, it rocks. So uh, Texas also a great, great place. A lot of people are leaving California to get over to Texas. Are you running into a lot of Californians the last several months? And if so, are they behaving themselves? Or are they causing craziness over there? <laughs> I actually have ran into a few Californians, um, and uh, they seem like good people, as far as I can tell in the interactions. Um, but you know, hopefully we keep Texas, Texas. But I don't, I'm not getting into many politics. You know, for yeah. me, it's all kind of yep. comedy at this point right now. So I agree. <laughs> I agree. A lot of ridiculousness going on. Yeah. So you yeah. are you are fighting at bantamweight, where you mostly have fought throughout your career. You're going up against Anderson Dos Santos. Uh, the odds makers have you about a two to one favorite, slightly higher. Uh, various guests that we've had are big into it. Some guests don't look at their odds at all. Some guests love to gamble. Some guests don't love to gamble where where do you stand on that if it's not a secret um i don't gamble on fights right now yet i want to kind of get into it just have it yet but as far as i'm concerned i mean the odds don't mean much to me at all you know um 
like won fights when I was a uh, underdog and um, the one fight I lost I was uh, I, I think I was a favorite so it doesn't matter man it's um nobody if somebody knew exactly how to guess what, uh, what would happen in an MMA fight then they, I mean MMA wouldn't be the sport it is right now it's too unpredictable you know yeah and um, I know Anderson I think it's a great fight for me um, I, but I know Anderson's tough I respect the dude um, I like the guy you know he seems like a good guy but uh I'm uh, I'm ready for Saturday night. Absolutely. You know what I wonder? I've been a combat sports fan for a long, long time, and there are a lot of educated fans. That's one of the things I like a lot about MMA. And I'm not trying to, you know, to um, rip on boxing or anything like that. But you know, some boxing fans are guys showing up eating hot dogs, hamburgers, nachos, never trained a day in their life, never boxed. And, and maybe learn a little bit about it, but have don't really know the intricacies of it. Whereas MMA has a lot of fans that train jujitsu, that train Muay Thai, that may train both, that may train boxing, that may have competed in smokers, that may have competed at a lower level, that may be competing in their schools. And so a lot of people are educated. We still do have those guys that are not. And the guys that are not are usually the guys yelling and saying stupid stuff in the audience, which we know we see sometimes. But I think, you know, there's less people than that than uh, in boxing and other sports. But my question to you is, when you see a fighter that beats another fighter and that's favored to beat another fighter like you are, a lot of things go into it. And, and I think a lot of fans think if one fighter is faster has better skills, has a better chin, is that going to mean that he's going to win nine times out of ten? Or is there some stuff that the other fighter can do just by throwing in something tricky or 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 just getting lucky or, or, or something, you know, to, to make it, uh, to give him a chance? Like, how often is it about the guy that's just the more solid fighter that's better in all these aspects and how often is it just a, 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 a split second that the one guy did something really good or really tricky or really you know i would play. say i would say luck plays a lot less role into it as but i would say in that equation of speed athleticism and a chin you have to i mean i guess the chin kind of covers it but you have to add in cardio and grit um, you know, somebody can be super athletic, whatever, um, super talented, but if you don't have the cardio and you don't have that grit, just that dog in you, then a lot of times people who are less talented will end up winning the fight. And it's not, I mean, sometimes you get some lucky shots of somebody that should have won a fight and just gets caught and, you know, just gets lazy or whatever. But most of the time when I see a fight that uh, should have gone one way but goes the other, it's usually because um, they just got out grinded, you know, and, um, and that's, I think, where my wrestling comes into play a lot. I think people think I'm kind of an explosive athletic fighter, um, that I would get tired sometimes. But uh, my cardio, my strength and conditioning coach, Mike Skechers, has my cardio on point. And um, no matter what, even if I get a little tired, I'm a wrestler, man, through and through. I've been wrestling my whole life. So if you want to get gritty in there, you want to get grimy, I'm all about it. We can we can do it all night. Yeah, without a doubt. And you've been incredibly, incredibly impressive. Who who is your favorite of the guys that have been mentioned as the goats over the last several years? If you look at Habib, you look at Anderson Silva, you look at George St. Pierre, maybe even going back further, BJ Penn, uh, Matt Hughes. Who is your favorite out of these guys? Fedor, guys in different organizations. Anyone anyone you like a lot out of those guys? You know, that's a that's hard because I like them all for their for different things, you know, like right now, like I used to always love TJ, and part of that was um, that I saw his debut against Renan uh, uh, Barral, mm -hmm. and um, and I know that not not his debut, but I saw him step up and fight him for the title the first time he did, and I mean I was scared for TJ because right at that point, I mean I was like an amateur, Renan Barral seemed like somebody nobody would ever beat, and TJ stepped in on 16 days, and I was like, man, how could he do that? How would he, you know, five round fight and ended up knocking him out. Um, you know, huge underdog in that, and I just um, that was huge for me and super motivating. And then he, he had all, he had all the stuff that he had, but I loved his character in this last fight. You know, he was real. He seemed like he really humbled himself. He showed that he still has that dog. I mean, that's one of those fights that I think Corey was kind of more talented at striking and you know landed the 
harder, cleaner shots. But I think TJ just being a dog is what gave what had the judges give it to him. Um, but I mean, all those guys, I love, I love Habib. You know, I, I honestly love Triple C. You know, he's I've always loved him as a kid. I my mom bought me his book when I was in uh, a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was just wrestling and stuff, and I loved him then. And he's kind of cheesy sometimes, but um, but he's the cheesiness is growing on people and stuff. And I mean, he is just a dog. I mean, dude knows how to win. He knows how to compete. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many John John. I mean, I, I love John them all. John too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and there's guys that there's guys that aren't at that level. Like I mean, I I like Justin Gagey a lot, you know, and I've been around him. Um, I I just saw him when I was in Canada. When I fought in Canada, I was doing some stuff on fight day, and then he came. He just kind of walked past me to do his warm up, and just the energy he was carrying and how he held himself on fight day, I'll just never forget it. You know, there's people like that that just like you, you don't forget that energy. DC's the same way. I saw him walking into the hotel and he said like hey how are you boys doing to me and my brother and i was just like man this guy has the energy of a giant you know um so the, there's tons of guys that i like for different things michael chandler i think super intelligent and i love the way he carries himself um yeah so i mean yeah. too many <laughs> too many to name absolutely and it's nice that you can see that in these other people because that shows that you're you're knowledgeable and your mind is open to kind of gain information and to learn and to be having respect because there's always someone that comes before you and even if you're the best there's always people that are still on your level as well and to be aware of them you know and and recognize them is really cool when you have fighters that that can go most of their career with just great wins or, or very few losses or uh or just like these long winning streaks is it that the fighters that are that keep on winning all the time is it that they're not making any mistakes or is it that maybe they're making mistakes but that they're they're making the correction to the mistake really quickly what would you say yeah i mean i think everybody has little mistakes they make i think um when it comes to consistently winning it's just about bringing yourself back to um, the place you were at to get to those wins, you know, taking yourself back to hell. Um, in the words of Tim Grover, it's so true. Um, to win, like to get to that level, it takes so much, so much sacrifice, so much work, so much grind. And once you get there, I think that it's easy not to like kind of be like, oh, we're going to switch things. We're going to start doing it like this now or like that now, um, you know, or, and, um, but being able to take yourself mentally back to the place of, hell and just um going through that i think the people who can continue to do that are the ones that continue to win and um you can win for a couple times continuously without doing that but eventually i think um people will start catching up to you so i think everybody makes mistakes but i think um like uh like triple c is a great example for that yeah. he can bring himself back to that and continue to like even after the mighty mouse loss he can come back and go back to where he was mentally to win an Olympic gold medal, which is freaking, I mean, it's so uh, unheard of to win an Olympic gold medal and then be as hungry as he is and win two, be champion two divisions, I, I think, or maybe maybe one, no, two divisions. And it's, that, that's just like, uh, that's incredible to me, you know? Absolutely. Because people don't understand what it takes to win an Olympic gold medal. Well, after that, most people are done, just they've had enough. Yeah, without a doubt. You think we'll see Triple C back, and if so, how soon? Um, I hope not. Uh, not not for any personal reasons, but I just think uh, I think he hung it up at the right time, and I love seeing it when guys hang it up at the right time. That's so much respect for Khabib because I mean he has no ego. He he did what he wanted to do. He's done with it, and nothing anybody says is gonna bring him back. So I, I hope Triple C uh, just is able to enjoy his life and um, uh, you know and not feel forced to come back for whatever reason that makes sense how about mighty mouse over in one championship you know over there the weight division with the same name is actually the weight to class up i think you may or may not know that did you know that yeah i was just talking to a teammate about that this um couple of days ago actually yeah yeah because you know because it has to do with the weight the weight uh allowances and other stuff but so mighty mouse was at his best at flyweight now essentially even though they call it flyweight he's forced to fight at 135. can he come back from that loss against adriano marias and, and kill it at 135 or is that going to be difficult because of the, the the size of his opponents and his age maybe 
I think it's all just depend on where he's at mentally. I mean, if he uh, he's he can overcome challenges pretty well. So I think um, if he want if he really wanted to prove that he could do it at 35, which is technically flyweight, then I think he'll get it done. But um, he's done a lot in his career. He's um, had a lot of accomplishments. So um, unless he really really wants to do it. Then I then I don't see it, but um, but if he wants to, I believe that he could. He he could put on weight. He could get stronger. He could make the adjustments for sure. Yeah, he's amazing, and I was remiss in not mentioning him as one of the goats because he definitely was. We only got about two minutes left with you, so let me throw a couple questions at you real quick. Uh, Jose Aldo, Pedro Munoz, your weight class coming up here. Uh, is it okay if I ask her an opinion on that, or do you not want to talk about it since they're in there with you on Saturday? Oh, I mean. Uh... I, I like both those dudes. I think I would go with Jose Auto though, just um, on paper and from what I've seen, yeah. Okay. How about uh, Michael Chiesa, Vicente Luque? Hmm. I don't, you know, I, I think I'd go with Vicente on that one, but uh, but I like Chiesa a lot, you know, so, but that's a, that's a tough one to call. Absolutely. And then the main, you probably – somewhat acquainted with Derek Lewis, so it's probably personal thing there. Are you a friend of his or, or not necessarily? And who do you pick there? Uh, no, not, not necessarily. Um, but, I, but I still got uh, Derek Lewis in that. I think, um, I think uh, the, uh, um, he's just too green. You know, Derek Lewis is real experienced, so I got him. I got him in that one. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to you taking this fight. I just think you're better than this guy wherever the fight goes. So I think if people want some free money, they should put it on a Miles Johns. And I don't think I've actually said that on a show. I'm not advocating people betting. Certainly don't bet more than you can afford to lose. But I think my man here, Miles Johns, is going to show some serious skill. And I don't I don't think there's going to be too much of a question uh, if that fight hits the final bell. Any prediction, decision, knockout? Or you, you know, right, thank you. Uh... No problem. I think um, I see it. I see it ended in a finish. I see it in a finish. Um, he's uh, he's not really a much of a decision guy. He has a couple in the UFC, but he usually gets he either gets finished or gets a finished. And um, I've been uh, I think I've tapped into the new level of being able to find the finish. You know that was always kind of a challenge for me, just finding it and had this kind of a skill. But I think that I found that now, so I might see a finish coming. Excellent. Sounds great. Miles Johns, I want to thank you so much for jumping on with us, man. Saturday, UFC 265. Uh, can't wait to see you do what you do and get the W over Anderson Dos Santos. Thank you so much for jumping back on with us here at uh, the MMA Power. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks for the time. Thanks. Have a great night. Bye. And that was Miles Chapo and Johns can't wait to see him in action. Uh, I I just think he's got that fight. He's he's a killer. Uh, Twelve and one, I think his record is. And uh, Dr. Adam Rorda, I think that Mr. Dos Santos is going to be in for uh, a beating. And uh, I think this could uh, not go the distance. But yeah, Miles Johns for the win there. I'm sure you agree. Absolutely. I we were just talking about that earlier. And uh, to Mr. Chris Daniels, who just dropped this in No Saying Live with Six Popular Show. Saying, well, what did he say? <laughs> well, hey, check us out on all the other platforms because we're all over the place. Yeah. With six of them on, in about uh, 45 different locations right now. So it adds up pretty yes. quick. And, yeah. you know, some of them have anywhere between 10 and a few hundred. But yes. thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the MMA Power Hour cannot do it without the support of you guys go ahead head on over to our social media our personal social media it's at mma power hour give us likes comments and shares help get word out so that way uh you know we we don't have to worry about six on this one platform yep. we always have top guests like this tonight we had uh, a, a world champion and uh, two others that actually have potential to get there pretty quickly here yes. and we w are going to be bringing you more like this next week Absolutely, without a doubt. Not only that, but basically our show is on late and uh, definitely too late for Europe and other places around the world where people watch it. So usually within a few days, we've got a few thousand people watching. So I do thank Chris for jumping in and being a douchebag and trying to point out how few people we have watching. <laughs> Love you, Chris. Thank you for dropping in. But we have people watch on our show. And, uh, you know, you're here, too. So, hey, love to have you. Yes, and, thank uh, you so much. You know, we really and appreciate it. Likes, and, comments, you know. shares. We love it. Colin, hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night for myself. Awesome. And I'll let you take it out. Thank you, Dr. Adam Rorta, for all you do. It's invaluable. Really appreciate working with you. Uh, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. I really am grateful for all of you. 
and uh you know it's uh <laughs> there's always gonna there's always gonna be haters and so i'm not trying to hate on any haters but you know it is what it is i'm an old dog here and i guess in my day someone just decides hey let me drop in so i can drop a turd on you then i'll drop it back on you anyway uh thank you guys all our guests were awesome in order of appearance tisha torres uh straw weight contender uh coming up with an amazing fight at ufc 265 against angela hill thank you so much tisha torres uh we had the one championship featherweight champion Tan Lee and he's healing up from an injury but will be defending soon maybe going for a second belt against Christian Lee somewhere in the next year thank you so much Tan appreciate you and Miles Johns UFC bantamweight contender with a big fight this Saturday as well as Tisha Torres on uh, UFC 265 uh, going up against Anderson Dos Santos thank you so much Miles Johns really appreciate you ladies and gentlemen spread the love in a positive way be that guy be that girl after all during these tough times we really need each other and give some love back to yourself uh you know and uh, make sure to take care of your family give a friend a call that you haven't talked to for a while let someone know you got their back that maybe you haven't been able to be there for but you don't want them to think you're gone because you're still there in your heart take good care of your animals and your pets they deserve love and they give it back to you unconditionally so uh for tonight for the whole team here the mma power hour dr adam Rorta, i'm colin Cr